Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Sync Tech, Hawaii. Gives me great pleasure this afternoon to bring to the table Jeffrey King, Hawaii Coordinator for the Citizens Climate Lobby. And you think I've had some interesting guests here before? Wait till you hear what Jeffrey is proposing for us. Jeffrey, you're, you're a local boy. Aren't you? Or no? Um, no, I'm actually I'm actually originally from Chicago. Been okay. here a little okay. over two years though. And yeah, okay, from Chicago, that explains your extreme high poweredness. You're you're not exactly a lady. Oh, am I high powered? Okay. Yeah. All right. And when he's not doing citizens' climate lobby work, which of course commands a huge salary, that's a small joke. He doesn't. He is a jazz musician. My goodness, and he's looking for some other line of work down the road, maybe, but uh, yeah. Anyway, talk about an interesting fellow. Now, what Jeffrey is proposing to do is nothing short of drastically dropping the amount of carbon that we put into the atmosphere. And that, of course, has full of CO2, the greenhouse gas, and so forth, so forth. You are a sophisticated audience. I don't need to go on. So welcome, Jeffrey, and let, we have so much to cover. Let's just jump right into it and explain first what Citizens Climate Lobby is all about. Thanks, Howard. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, real quick, uh, Citizens Climate Lobby is a nonprofit, nonpartisan national organization that's uh, you know, whose mission is to address climate change in the most effective way that we believe mm -hmm. is possible, and that is through a proposal we call carbon fee and dividend. Mm -hmm. um, so other people might refer to this as a revenue neutral carbon tax, uh, though it is technically different because we are proposing a fee as opposed mm -hmm. to a tax, and there is a, a technical difference between mm -hmm. the two. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, really briefly, uh, a, a carbon fee and dividend would, you know, one, put a steadily rising fee on, on ultimately carbon dioxide emissions, but mm -hmm. that would translate into the uh, individual user's uh, language as basically and, fossil fuels. And this would be uh, coal, oil, and natural gas. Yes, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyth yeah, anything that emits carbon dioxide mm -hmm. that's considered mm -hmm. a fossil fuel. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the main purpose of that is obviously to to make you know basically fossil fuel usage and investment unpopular, but mm -hmm. uh, more strategically to be able to basically rapidly create demand for the renewable energy market. Um, so you know as as the price of fossil fuels go up higher and higher, uh, mm -hmm. you know individuals and companies alike will be less and less inclined to invest uh, in fossil fuels and you know basically find the alternative mm -hmm. whatever's going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, and as we're going to see as we go through the slides, it's good for the economy also. Yeah, Very and that, good, that yeah. yeah, and that's kind of uh, just to finish mm -hmm. up. The dividend portion is is there to uh, number one, you know, ensure that nobody's going to be hurt during this transition from mm -hmm. fossil fuel to renewables. And yeah. uh, so you know, in the let's say like you spend an extra fifty dollars on your tank for a month. Uh, during this transition, mm -hmm. you know, we'd make sure that you get at least fifty dollars back in a check every month. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the basics of that. But yeah, I, I can go and f uh, explain later on how yeah. it'll help the economy as well. But let's start. You you start off in your slides with with a quiz here. <laughs> what can we do about carbon change or climate climate change? And I'm pretty gosh darn authoritative. I would say uh, go vegan. Actually, uh, this isn't necessarily a quiz. It's uh, just, you know, uh, we, we just, you know, present this slide when mm -hmm, we present mm -hmm. because uh, this is generally what we find on, you know, on Google searching and, you know, hear from mm -hmm. others when we ask them, you know, what do you know about uh, solutions you've heard in terms mm -hmm, of climate, mm -hmm. addressing climate change? And it generally comes down to these three as mm -hmm, major mm -hmm. ones. Um, and, yeah, and we, you know, we definitely support all of these actions, but... Um, for us, th this is, you know, ultimately only individual action. And to really mm -hmm. address the climate crisis yep. in the time we have left, which will be led into by our next slide, um, mm -hmm. you know, we really need yep. to take much more drastic action. Yeah, and we're, we're, instead of individuals, we go get to the big boys here. So only about 36% of average American fossil fuel, some direct emissions, indirect, the products we buy, like we looked at... Uh, a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. uh, we meat eaters buy cow and 
cow is a bit of a, a carbon emitter. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. that's more uh, methane, but um, mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely greenhouse gases overall, yeah. indeed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, and that that last slide was um, you know up there to illustrate the point that we you know even if all of us did our part as individuals mm -hmm. to to you know reduce our carbon emissions as much as possible, there's still this other two thirds of the pie that's still left to be mm -hmm. uh, solved. You know, and that's basically as it says, embedded in the products we buy through manufacturing, mm -hmm. shipping, etc. Yep. So a lot of things we don't have direct control over as Yeah, and we, we don't think of it. We, we talk about resource efficiency, but it boils down to carbon efficiency also. Yes. Yeah. So what else do you have for us? We've, you, there's just so much meaty thing. Oh, now this <laughs> looks interesting. <laughs> Trillion the ton dash org. Oh, what is going on here? Okay, so this is a website uh, put on by Oxford University called trillionthton.org, and that's why it's spelled a little uh, differently because mm -hmm, it's a British mm -hmm. site. Um, but yeah, this is an estimate of how many tons of CO2 are being emitted into the air as we speak. Um, and the reason they called it trillionth ton is mm -hmm. because uh, from their research, they believe that we'll hit the two degree limit, which, you know, to put it casually, is sort of a, a, a point of no return in terms of. This is raising the. Earth's temperature or the water temperature, two degrees Celsius? Yes, the Earth's temperature overall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And yeah, and then that's sort of the, uh, the consensus among the scientific community is mm -hmm. that once we pass mm -hmm. that limit is when we really hit a danger zone, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so we're about over halfway there right now. And the thing I found most fascinating about this site is that if you look towards the bottom, um, there's, they actually give an estimate on the date, the time, and the second you know, that we will reach that uh, two degree limit mm -hmm. if we continue along this path. And so that will be, mm -hmm. you know, roughly 2038, mm -hmm. which is, gives us about 22 years yep. to, to, you know, genuinely address this issue. And by genuinely address, as we'll see in the next slides, we're talking about not just a little incremental step here and there. We're talking mm -hmm. about a huge dip. Yes. Yeah. So let, let's take a look at the next slide here. Border adjustments. What is a border ad adjustment? Oh, yeah, we skipped. Uh, what is carbon fee and dividend? That, that oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, and like I was explaining before, mm -hmm. um, just to put it a little bit more uh, visually and simply. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the idea of what we're setting out to do um, mm -hmm. is, yeah, put a rising fee on CO2 emissions. So, uh, that would start out at $15 per ton of CO2, mm -hmm. which equates to relatively about 10, 12 cents extra on the gallon. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, raise that fee by $10 every year. And then you, you talked about only one-third being direct and two-thirds being indirect. Say, mm -hmm. give an example of people who are manufacturers who manufacture cardboard boxes. Yeah. Because there's jillions of cardboard boxes out there. They, mm -hmm. they would be taxed, too, because they're consuming a heck of a lot of energy in manufacturing the product and then putting cardboard boxes mm -hmm. together and then shipping cardboard boxes somewhere. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, um, and yeah, and just to clarify, the, the fee is actually placed um, at either the point of extraction mm -hmm. or, or, you know, once if it's imported oil or whatever, it mm -hmm. will be, uh, you know, the fee will be assessed once it enters U.S. shores. So, mm -hmm. uh, so actually, the, you know, before it, 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 even the refinery purchases that, uh, that fuel, it, it already has a fee on it. So yeah. the kind of idea is the refinery passes it down to the oil company, oil company passes it down to the consumer or the companies that will be using the electricity or energy use in somehow or another. And then to take that one step back, <clears throat> there's a heck of a lot of equipment involved in extracting oil from the ground. That sure. equipment is generally made out of steel. You mm -hmm. don't make steel for nothing. That's a very energy intensive industry. That's true. So that too would be taxed. Yeah, at, the, at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just from these fees being passed mm -hmm. down. Yeah. So speaking of importing, exporting, so a lot of this comes from overseas. Mm -hmm. we're, we're the nation's, or the world's largest consumer of goods. Yeah. So we're importing a heck of a lot of stuff, and I think this uh, addresses that. Yeah, indeed. So, um, so this is mm -hmm. kind of a second element of the, the proposal is to, uh, as it says, charge import fees on products from countries that don't have a carbon fee. So, uh, you know, let's say you're, mm -hmm. you're India or something and you, you ship goods that, you know, have a carbon footprint on it, which will mm -hmm. be 
hard to avoid. And, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and if you don't have a, an equivalent fee uh, assessed on that from your country, then yeah, we will assess it. And, mm -hmm. um, and part of the, you know, the incentive for, for getting other countries to adopt their own carbon pricing system like we would have is to, you know, is, is, you know it's sort of the logic that, um, you know, if I was India, I would, as long as I have to do, as long as I'm going to be doing business with the U.S., I want to mm -hmm. make sure that that money is going to be going back to my country opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, just to Americans. Yep. And uh, so that's kind of the logic. And also to keep, um, one of the p bullet points on there was to uh, keep U.S. business competitive mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, ensure that um, U.S. businesses won't, you know, basically try to avoid the fee by just relocating to a different country. Good point, yeah. good point. So, so and for those uh, many uh, reasons. Yeah. Of course, the largest country or the most of our imports come from China, and it mm -hmm. sounds like the Chinese Premier and President Obama were getting along pretty good on, on this uh, issue of, of reducing uh, carbon. Output. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and luckily China, China is, you know, has, has understood the value of carbon mm -hmm. pricing and mm -hmm. has, um, you know, initiated a carbon pricing, uh, you know, system of their own. Um, okay. It's not exactly mm -hmm. like what we're what we're proposing, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely a great step in the right direction. So, so they're ahead of us in, in that, uh, in that Yeah, now. in, in yeah. general. Yeah, mm -hmm. they actually are. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the portraits of people m wearing great big face masks yeah. in Beijing, yeah, and children not being allowed to go outdoors, and that's a pretty good incentive to Yeah, geez. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what else do we uh, have for us here? Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> so yeah, British this is... Uh, Columbia. So I, I brought this slide up just to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, answer the question, you know, has this been done anywhere before? Mm -hmm. And in fact, it has in British Columbia, Canada. Um, and, they, and their system was enacted in 2008. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as you can see on the left, a, a study that uh, measured, you know, the impact from 2008 to 2014 found that gasoline consumption was dropped by seven times in the, in the mm -hmm, area. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at the same time, uh, British Columbia's uh, economy was actually entirely stable throughout those six years mm -hmm. and actually did perform a little bit better than the rest of Canada mm -hmm. during those, uh, those years. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, right, so, sure. so, you know, this is, this is actually something that's been tested and we can see so a proven I, model. Because Vancouver and Victoria are right near the Washington border. I wonder how many, much of that was due to cars driving. Driving the across Washington the border. Right yeah, there. no, there, that, was, yeah. that was definitely part of the impact mm -hmm, to study mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, for the most part, it, w it was an, an actual drop in, mm -hmm. w you know, a, as we would think of it without sort of these yeah. loopholes. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we all follow our pocketbooks, yep. which, which is the basic premise of this. Yes, indeed. And on that cheery note, we need to take a break. Think Tech Hawaii Code Green with Jeffrey Kim back in a moment. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Be able to. Yeah. Good afternoon again. Howard Wig, Code Green, Jeffrey Kim, Hawaii representative for the Citizens Climate Lobby. And we have just begun to see how big a proposal this is, if we're really going to get serious, excuse me, about carbon reduction, this just may be the way, and we just saw that British Columbia has indeed undertaken this, and during our discussion, I learned that China is already moving in this direction, and of course, we have seen 
the pollution levels from China go up and up and up and up and up, and mm -hmm. uh, sounds like they're taking this very seriously, and they're undertaking a, a similar program to do this. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, go to our next slide now. Talk about a reduction in fees. What's what's going on with this chart here now? Sure. So this is uh, you know to show the amount of uh, carbon dioxide reductions that would happen. Uh, from our proposal being enacted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so as you can see, this would reduce CO2 emissions to 52% below 199 levels within 20 years. Um, and you know that is one of the most aggressive carbon reduction plans um, mm -hmm. that's been proposed for the United States. Um, and yeah, and the blue line is basically showing you what would happen if we didn't do anything, or if we did mm -hmm. business as usual. And uh, yeah, and the yellow line being uh, the amount of reductions or yeah, the amount of emissions that would happen mm -hmm. with our proposal in yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, that is dramatic stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, we picked 1990 levels because that's uh, basically where the the Kyoto Protocol was mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. sort of setting its targets around. Yeah, and you know, looking at the blue line, we haven't done all that badly. I'm I'm in the energy efficiency field, and mm -hmm. the economy is much more efficient than it was, but we have more people and we've prospered more people more stuff yeah yeah definitely just uh taking a hawaii example back in 1990 there was barely any residential air conditioning now the great majority of new homes are centrally air conditioned but yeah. despite all of that we're not rising mm -hmm. so we're doing a fairly good job now but this is this is what we really need, this type of program. Yeah. Now let's take a look at what, because you seem to be indicating that we're going to get prosperous through this program. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, um, so because of something we call revenue recycling from the, the dividend checks, uh, you know, we, we actually, our research actually found that, that, yeah, that people are going to be likely to, to spend their money relatively soon and, and sort of as... Uh, you know, to put it casually, fun money and, mm -hmm. you know, restaurants, entertainment and so forth. Um, and yeah, in our, in our research found that that actually helps to stimulate the economy and, mm -hmm. um, and not only, you know, create economic growth as we see here, um, but also be able to create, uh, yeah, job creation. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's not only through sort of, you know, the obvious of, of more jobs because of, of more renewable um, you know, more renewable I I industries being, being uh, able to, to do their thing, but, uh, uh, but also just creating jobs within the local economy from, mm -hmm. like I said, from, from things like people eating out more and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And we've seen this happen in Alaska because Alaska also gets, you know, checks cut out to each, each household. Uh, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they actually got it, they get it for the opposite reason, if you will, mm -hmm. for, you know, for a surplus of oil production. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but regardless, the, the principle is the same. Yeah, and people might do this drastic thing called investing in their children's education. Too. Yeah, wow. that, that would be very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I sense that it would cre simply create more American jobs because mm -hmm. suddenly shipping becomes much more of an issue. Mm -hmm. All those great big tankers, they, they don't run for free. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. And speaking of economic benefits, speaking of jobs, I think this goes kind of hand in hand with the last slide we saw here. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, so as I was mentioning, you know, because of revenue recycling, we would have um, more more job creation. Just you know, regardless of of how much uh, growth is happening within the renewable energy industry, um, mm -hmm. just because, like I said, it, it would it would feed into the, the local economy uh, and and yeah, and help create a lot of local jobs in, in addition to jobs in general. Um, but also because of the growth of the renewable energy industry, we would see mm -hmm. a lot of jobs. And uh, at this point, uh, the, st the numbers are uh, 2.1 million within 10 years of our proposal. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, definitely, you know, it doesn't really hurt on the economic side either. Yeah, yeah, no nothing wrong with 2 million more jobs. Uh, sure, you know? yeah. And those could be, some of them, uh, very decent paying jobs too. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of them with will be mm -hmm. uh, within the renewable energy sector. Yeah. Yeah. And I have friends in the renewable energy sector. They're, they're skilled people. Mm -hmm. They are up on roofs, say. They're, it's pretty dangerous. They, they, get, uh, they get a nice, nice hefty revenue from that. Right on, yeah. 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 
Okay, so what else we got here? Ooh, you've got some supporters in this realm here. Yeah, so this is just a short list of um, some, you know, noteworthy and, and well-known figures who support uh, carbon pricing initiatives overall. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, da Dr. James Hansen, who, uh, if, for those of you who may not be aware, is uh, a world-renowned climate scientist and one of the first people to ever testify in front of Congress really stating the fact that there is such a thing as global warming and, you know, and it's, it's a serious problem that needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, and he's actually on our advisory board for Citizens Climate Lobby uh, National Office. And, uh, and yeah, Joseph Stiglitz, who's a Nobel laureate economist, uh, as well as um, Robert Reich, who's former Secretary of Labor and another um, you know, mm -hmm. well-respected mm -hmm. economist. Uh, so definitely on the <laughs> economic side, it, this, is, mm -hmm. this is a credible um, solution yeah. and something that's been talked about for, you know, decades actually. And it's just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, our, it's just ha hasn't been really uh, put into action and, and, and organized around like yeah. until our organization yeah. came around. Um, but yeah, I think the most interesting name up there uh, probably is going to be Kenneth Cohen, who, as you can see, was a former vice president mm -hmm. of public mm -hmm. and government affairs for Exxon Mobil. Yes, yes. And, the, the, uh, the great climate deniers. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, just showing that there's mm -hmm. a diversity of people who, who all support mm -hmm. uh, this idea and, and think it is, you know, one of the first major steps we really need to take in order to, yeah, to make a legitimate impact yeah. on, the, on the problem. And then I'm looking at Arthur Laffer. There's so something called the Laffer Curve mm -hmm. that uh, economists talk about. So he's very, yeah. very, very respected in the industry. And then towards the bottom, there's this fellow named Bill Gates. <laughs> who might that be? Okay, so wow. yeah, as it, as it says, co-founder of uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, Bill Gates, you know, has definitely uh, been been an advocate for a revenue carbon tax for, for some time now, and mm -hmm. published a, a pretty lengthy article in the Atlantic, or there was an interview mm -hmm. with him in the Atlantic mm -hmm. uh, in the last few months, so mm -hmm. something definitely worth checking out if you have the time. Mm -hmm. And then Paul Anderson, Duke. Energy, they are, mm -hmm. they're headquartered in North Carolina, but they're throughout the South. That is a major, major, major utility. Yeah. One of the biggest in the nation. Mm -hmm. And then finally, at the bottom, one of my heroes, Elon Musk. Right. He's developing the, he has a factory that's going to be, I believe it's 42 million square feet. Wow. And you'd have to translate that into many, many, many football fields. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be doing nothing but manufacturing batteries. And the factory is only maybe two-thirds finished. Mm -hmm. And he's already got orders for tens and tens of thousands of his batteries. Wow. Yeah. That's, so yeah, that's that, excellent. That's a major, major name to uh, mm -hmm. be, be behind you. So you would think that uh, we'd be getting some uh, public action. And speaking of public action here, what is this? So yeah, as it says yeah. uh, on the bottom right corner, uh, this is a Stanford <laughs> University poll that was conducted uh, in 2015. And yeah, and the question was, you know, would you support a refundable carbon tax, which is essentially what we're asking for. It's like a, yeah, uh, maybe an easier way to look at our, our proposal is basically as a, as an, uh, a carbon rebate program, if you will, mm -hmm. um, like high five. Only you don't have mm -hmm. to get up and and recycle the can. You just get a check sent to your mail every month. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, and, and you know, as you can see, uh, a majority of Americans are actually in favor of this idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, to add on top of that, you know, from a, a more local angle, uh, Blue Planet Foundation actually um, had a survey recently that you know asked. Um, similar questions and found that mm -hmm. uh, a majority of people were actually willing to pay more and not even have this, this refundable mm -hmm. element in there, but mm -hmm. just, just pay more in general to see more clean initiatives happen. Yeah. So yeah. It's, and overall, I, yeah, it, I, I think it's you know, some evidence that, that uh, our state and our country are ready for this. Yeah, they, it sounds like the citizens are ahead of the politicians because you don't <laughs> see a whole lot of political uh, will behind this in, in the state legislature. Uh, in the state legislature, I mean, I, I, would, I don't know. We've, we've talked to uh, several legislators locally mm -hmm. and, and have found quite a bit of support. Mm -hmm. um, but nationally, certainly, um, we're seeing you know, quite, a, 
quite a change happening um, in Congress in mm -hmm. terms of their receptivity to uh, these ideas, uh, which will be coming up in one of our future slides. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, lo locally, you've got, oh, well, he here's uh, here are the national people. Yeah. Oh, wow. I do I see, where is Brian Schatz here? Oh, uh, okay, so yeah, this is actually only uh, for House members. Oh, House, okay, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. But yeah, so this is a, uh, a, a recent development mm -hmm. called the Climate Solutions Caucus, and mm -hmm. it is a bipartisan caucus that's, you know, has to have equal members of, oh, you know, Republicans and Democrats. Very important, very yeah. important, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, very amazing to us that we are, you know, within such a short amount of time. I mean, it was formed in February, and mm -hmm. already now we have 20 members. Um, and just showing that, that not only are we seeing, you know, bipartisan effort uh, so strong mm -hmm. on both sides, but, um, but yeah, that they are willing to work together to, to really tackle this uh, issue. What and, a concept, yeah. And yeah, and um, especially uh, surprising was, uh, or, you know, inspiring to us was, a, uh, a, a House resolution that was um, introduced last November mm -hmm. um, from New York representative, uh, Republican representative Chris Gibson. Uh, mm -hmm. That was one of the first, you know, documents from that party that genuine, you know, really clearly stated that climate change, you know, is is a, a you know an issue that's to you know not only um, the environment but national security, mm -hmm. and that yeah, and that we must we must take action accordingly. Yeah. Yep. And he got 13, or sorry, 12 other House Republicans to sign on to that, too. So uh, I really, really do believe that, you know, there's, there's some changes happening in Congress. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's impressive. And let's hope that it, uh, a similar change takes place in our legislature. Yeah. Because we're, we have a teeny, teeny little population, but we have a lot of influence in the, in the nation also. And we of course, are, we pay the highest prices by far. Mm -hmm. And... So we need to wrap up, but before we do, how can we get hold of you, Jeffrey? Sure. Uh, so uh, if you can send an email to Honolulu at citizensclimatelobby.org, we'll be able to answer any questions you may have. Um, and otherwise, you can just visit our national website at citizensclimatelobby.org. Um, and once again, yeah, our, our local chapter email is just Honolulu on top of that email address, mm -hmm, on top mm -hmm. of that website address. Yeah, well, let, let's see you building and building and building the, the local chapter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, on that cheery note, we need to wrap up again. We could have gone really deeply into to depth in, into this, but we must bid fond aloha to Jeffrey Kim the Hawaii rep for the Citizens Climate Lobby. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming by, Jeffrey. My pleasure. And see you in two weeks on Think Tech Hawaii Code Green. Signing off.